thank you. Uh, my name is Raju, uh, and I'm from Norwegian University of Life Sciences. And uh, today I will be talking about tools, uh, uh, simulating tools. It's not much related to uh, survival analysis, but uh, it's it's about simulation. And uh, uh, Scottish uh, philosopher Thomas Carlyle said, uh, "Math is man is a tool using animal." And without tool, he is nothing, and with tool, he is all. So uh, it's a tool. Uh, with this tool, it, uh, I suppose it will help researcher to, uh, to do test and to understand what they are building. Uh, this tool uh, was started in 2015 uh, by my supervisor, his supervisor, and his supervisor uh, in this uh, paper. and. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, this year we extended this to a multiple response case. And uh, before uh, going how and what the tool is, uh, I would like to say why we need this tool. This is a typical situation when uh, we need uh, simulated data, uh, whether uh, to understand something we uh, like uh, models or methods or some kind of algorithms uh, if we want to compare that to any other or if we want to compare uh, uh, like understand how it behaves in certain kind of data so in those particular situation we need some specific nature of data that we want to test so uh, usually in in uh, uh, a model uh, has this uh, response and predictors you usually uh, denote by x and y and uh, they are controlled or they are uh, distributed with uh, that uh, with this kind of uh, distribution where this covariance matrix defines their variance and covariance and uh, usually we define that relationship in terms of like this beta and uh, regression coefficients and actually those regression coefficients, they are just uh, uh, um, an expression of those uh, covariance matrices. So if we know those covariance matrices, we understand, we know the, the, the model underneath. So, um, but there are a lot of unknowns to fully identify this model. But in uh, uh, borrowing this concept of uh, relevant uh, components or relevant um, uh, space. Uh, for example, there uh, we can we can imagine uh, some kind of space in, in in both predictors and response, which contains like for example this this green space in a predictor. Uh, they we can imagine that contains the relevant information for the response, uh, not all. So. Uh, those are the uh, kind of concentrated juice, and uh, the others, they are not. And we can imagine a similar thing in, in, in the response. So if we look at the model in, 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 in the perspective of uh, those, um, uh, those space, uh, there we can, we can know uh, that some principal components that can span this space. So uh, the principal components of X spans this space and some principal components of Y spans this uh, juicy space and uh, the rest are not relevant. So if we look at the, the, the relationship in terms of those principal components, uh, like in this uh, expression here, we have reduced uh, the unknowns significantly. For example, if you look at this uh, uh, diagonal matrices, uh, because they are the principal components, so the only unknowns are the diagonal element, the rest are zero. And if we look at the uh, relationship between the principal component of predictors and principal component of response, for example, here if first and second principal component is relevant for the first principal component of the response, then those two are the only one which are not 
zero, but the rest are zero. So uh, we have kind of simplified this whole situation um, uh, a lot so that uh, by understanding or finding out these uh, non-zero uh, numbers here, we can understand the complete model. And by using that underneath distribution, we can simulate um, the, um, the data uh, that, uh, that, uh, that satisfies the properties that the user have um, input. Um, input. So, uh, so instead of uh, going through how we have um, obtained um, like how we, uh, uh, the structure underneath, I will go uh, through how to use these things and um, uh, why, uh, uh, how user can interact with this package. So we have built a small signy uh, app that can, that can uh, give a nice uh, and easy interface for the user. Uh, in the, in the, in the side panel, there is some kind of user input um, uh, area where a user can input uh, the parameters for the simulation. And using those parameters, uh, we simulate the data with uh, those properties. So I will start with a univariate uh, like uh, uh, simulation of um, uh, model with uh, just one response. And here, if you look at this, uh, we are simulating 200 uh, observations and 15 predictor variables, uh, 200 uh, observations and 15 predictor variables. And out of those 15 predictor variables, six are relevant for the response variable. Yes, so only six predictor variables are relevant. And uh, those six um, you know, predictor variables, they are spanned by the principal component at position three, four, six, and four and six. So with only these like few parameters, we can uh, simulate very fine tuned uh, uh, data, very fine, fine tuned data that, uh, um, uh, that was, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that kind of, uh, that gives uh, a good control to the user, yes? So, uh, and this data, the model underneath, it has, it, it has nine, 0 0.9 coefficient of determination. And this gamma parameter here, it is, um, it is, it controls the multicollinearity. That means like higher the value of gamma, uh, the eigenvalues for the principal components of X will decrease uh, um, drastically. That means like uh, there will be a uh, large multicollinearity in the data. And if you increase this gamma, like uh, decrease the gamma, the multicollinearity will reduce a lot. So once you set the parameters and then just simulate the data, it will uh, give the data. Yes, and that data you can download in, in R data format, CSV, or JSON format. And in the dashboard here, you can also uh, see the properties of the data. For example, like uh, since we have set, uh, uh, we need six principal components that are relevant. That means like here we, we saw that uh, um, variable number two, three, uh, four, six, um, eight, and 12, but they are uh, they are the one which are relevant and does not have uh, non zero does have non zero regression coefficient the rest are uh, zero and uh, the the covariance structure underneath is uh, is in the right here and uh, this is the uh, data that we have simulated here and if you look at this um, the covariance between the principal component and the response um, this, this kind of shows you um, how difficult the model is to predict and how easy it is to uh, in, in, in different situations. For example, when we increase the uh, multicollinearity here uh, a lot, uh, that means like in this one, we have um, uh, the 
principal component as position two, three, and four, they are relevant, but they have very small covariance, um, uh, uh, very small uh, variation. So the, this model is difficult to predict. And similarly, if we, if we decrease the multicollinearity in the data, uh, the data um, we get here is relatively easier to predict, easier for prediction. So this way you can simulate many different kinds of data. Uh, so this, this whole approach can be extended to the multivariate uh, setting. And in the multivariate setting, we have a similar plot, but with multiple response. So here we have uh, for a response variable and the covariance structure is uh, is here. So here, if you look at uh, this red and blue um, dots, they are the relevant um, uh, principal component that are relevant for this first and third uh, response component. So um, I have, uh, so this is, uh, this is a situation where uh, uh, this is, uh, this is a shiny one app which a user can use uh, to, uh, for, for a simple uh, use. Um, and if you are a RStudio user, uh, there is also a, a RStudio Gazettes that gives a similar interface uh, so that it will be easier for a user to simulate the data. And uh, so I want to show um, some, uh, like uh, tell you some application of the symbol. Uh, for example, uh, uh, people can uh, people can use this to, um, for example, compare their uh, methods or algorithms they built uh, with some other algorithms that are uh, that are in um, in in use, uh, and they can also understand how their method or model or uh, algorithms behave in certain kinds of data. And uh, not only in the research, but you can also use this uh, in the education. For example, if you want to teach a student about uh, how, uh, how kind of, uh, for example, uh, loadings of the, uh, uh, when teaching principal components, how the loadings uh, behave uh, in certain kind of data and how uh, a relevant uh, component um, it gives higher rise in the loading or a similar thing yes so you can you can set up a data um, with specific properties and use the data to um, uh, use in the teaching or uh, even for creating examples so um, uh, that is uh, that is one use and I have set up one uh, example uh, using this one so here is a uh, 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 our and our uh, um, code for for simulating uh, the data. Here I have set up four different data sets with uh, uh, different designs. For example, this gamma here it controls the multicollinearity. That means there are two designs which has low mul uh, which have low multicollinearity and two designs which have high multicollinearity. And uh, here are uh, Another to this RELPOS, which controls the position of the relevant component. That means uh, in the first design, there is uh, number one to five, uh, they are the relevant component. And in the second one, uh, number five to nine are the relevant component. In that way, we can know uh, if the relevant component is closer to the uh, like um, initial or um, the, uh, it is far away. So uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of a way uh, a user can uh, create an ex experimental design uh, to, to check uh, their methods, yes? So using this, I have, uh, I have uh, taken two estimation methods. One is a partial least square and uh, another one is principal component regression. So I want to compare those two methods uh, on uh, these four uh, particularly designed uh, data, yes? So uh, here, the first one, it's a, a high multicollinearity. The second one, a low multicollinearity, but both of them, they have uh, the relevant component at position one to five. And in the same way, uh, like uh, this, uh, the lower uh, two plots, they have a relevant component far away. So uh, you can see like um, in both the case, uh, the principal uh, partial least square regression, it, it gave like uh, 
uh, the better prediction than the principal component regression uh, and uh, with a smaller, fewer components. So it's not, uh, uh, it's uh, just one example how you can use uh, um, the, the package to uh, compare different estimation methods. So I have used estimation methods, but uh, you can use uh, algorithms or um, some, some uh, models, yes. Um, so to, uh, to download the package, currently uh, the multiple uh, response um, uh, uh, variation of the package is not in CRAN, but the, the first one, which, is, uh, which can simulate uh, one response model, uh, is available in CRAN. And uh, you can download it uh, from GitHub, and uh, uh, you can run that Shiny app uh, from GitHub directly. Uh, and uh, thank you, of, um, yeah, everyone. And uh, thank you, use our community for this opportunity. And they are my supervisors, and uh, they help me a lot uh, here uh, in creating this package. And um, yes, thank you very much. Here are some responses.